Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where every day we try to simplify technology and put it in a language that everyone can understand. And hey, if we get everyone on the same page, who knows, maybe we can organically get everyone on the same page, attract talent to the space, investors, partners, and even increase adoption. And when I recently heard about the backstory behind Sienna, where the company got its name, and how it made a huge impact when it hit Uniswap recently, I had to get them on the podcast to find out more. But the real reason that I discovered Sienna, there's a bit of a story there, was because I I saw a tweet by Monty Munford. And the man is a legend and kind of guy you could just chat with for hours. And he's armed with so many great stories. I, I first saw him on stage moderating a tech conference in Armenia that had Kim Kardashian, Gary Vaynerchuk, Serge Tankian and CNN's Richard Quest on stage. And uh, Monty was the guy moderating it. It did a fantastic job. Not only that, he's also a writer for The Economist, BBC, and even an ex-Bollywood villain. See what I mean about the stories? But he is now an evangelist for the Sienna Network, and I think we're in for a great conversation. But enough spoilers from me. Buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to London, where we're going to learn more about the great man himself and Sienna. So, a massive warm welcome to the show, Monty. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Oh, blimey, where to begin? <laughs> uh, I'm currently working in the crypto space as a chief evangelist for a, a privacy DeFi company called uh, Sienna Network, where the core contributors to that network. Uh, all that came about quite propitiously uh, in, in, uh, at, the, at the end of last year. That's my the main gig. I'm still right for the Economist, the BBC, a bit for the FT uh, about tech and i come from a background that includes managing bet and shop managers in london sink estates cleaner at uh, spark plug factories motorcycle dispatch all around london for 12 winters traveler gambler risk taker retrained as a journalist when i was 37 failed angry birds when i was in mobile games for 251k acted in two big bollywood movies as a villain uh, and generally an explorer naught, I would say is about right. Man, what a great story. And just to add to that, the last time I saw you was on stage in Armenia where there was um, a tech conference that included Gary Vaynerchuk, Kim Kardashian and Serge Tankian from System of a Down. I mean, do you remember that? Was it as bizarre for you on the other side? I remember that. It was so insane because I just wanted to get a selfie with Kim Kardashian. She's very nice. <laughs> You know, it, it was funny. When we arrived, I was with this bloke from CNN and we were in this, you know, basically the Harrods waiting room. Or, you know, like it was almost optional to show your passport because we were so privileged. Um, and then all of the media outside were waiting for Kim Kardashian and had peeked through. So I said to the guy that I was with from CNN, I met on the flight, I said, hey, listen, let's just go through and just pretend that we're Kim Kardashian. <laughs> so I, I just went, she's coming, she's coming, she's coming, everybody. <laughs> and we just opened <laughs> the door and jumped out, like jank in the boxes. <laughs> it just ignored us. Oh, man, that was, a, that was an amazing conference. I think that was probably, that might have been the peak of conferences. What do you think? Oh, absolutely, and I've never, I've never seen a lineup like that. And I ended up, I ended up interviewing Gary Vaynerchuk in like this little green room with about a hundred people that just wanted me out of the way so they could grab a selfie. It was just everything <laughs> was just insane. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've met Gary at my kind of members club in, in uh, London. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of know each other a bit, you know what I mean? Um, and then there was talk about me doing some work with him and all that stuff, but. It's, wasn't really my interest, to be honest, at the time. Yeah. Um, but again, you know that that was that was that really weird room, wasn't there? You know, I I I, I had a selfie taken with him just for just for the hell of it, uh, and got nearly as many kind of you know pluses or likes as I did with the one that I finally got with Kim on stage. <laughs> Oh man! And, but here in 2021, you're the chief uh, evangelist at Sienna, which I believe is a privacy-first and cross-chain decentralized finance platform where you can privately swap, lend, and convert your tokens into the private equivalent. But can you tell me more about the kind of problems that you set out to solve here? 
Well, great question. I mean, it's a very exciting time for us. We launched yeah. on two exchanges. Well, one exchange last week. We're going live on another exchange tomorrow. And then we're going to be tradable on another exchange the, the, in a couple of hours after that. So, yeah, well, it's privacy is a human right. You know what I mean? I don't think um, there's any question about that. Uh, you wouldn't expect anyone to, to snoop around your bank accounts and, and put that you know, in the public domain. But that is something that does happen uh, when you have a pub- public blockchain. So uh, there is no privacy because you have people that see what you're doing and see your transactions. And they're not fraudulent, but the, the phrase is called front running. So when you're front ran, you know, you basically lose out to someone who's been watching what you're doing. So there's a huge need for privacy, especially when it comes to decentralized finance or DeFi. And as I said, if you can imagine, you know, you, you're about to do something, you know, um, do something with a traditional bank and then someone comes in and makes you pay more money, then it sounds a bit stupid, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so that'd be one side of it. The other side of it all is, you know, there's a need to kind of connect blockchains, connect tokens uh, to create a kind of lattice or a grid underneath the whole, you know, what crypto seems to be known for as money running and, you know, money laundering and arms and drug dealers and all that stuff. When effectively it's, it's, it's a very, very, very sophisticated way and a much more efficient way of, of, of doing finance. So that's what we're also trying to do is to, is to you know, basically, you know, we, we, we call ourselves like the core contributors to the Siena project or the Siena network. And the network's all over the world. And we want to, almost in a Linux type of way, create something that people can access, they can trust. And that would probably be the, that would probably be the word. Um, the problem that we set, set out to solve was to solve the problem of distrust. And before you came on the podcast today, I did a little bit of research on Sienna. And what I loved was the backstory behind the name too, and especially when you're looking, you're using the, the cutting edge technology to what you're delivering here and what you're offering your community. But the backstory behind the name is incredibly cool too. Can I ask that you share that? Absolutely. So Sienna, our, our, you know, our, our name is Sienna with two N's. I think it's the Italian spelling of the city Sienna, S-I-E-N-A. Uh, which was pretty, very, very important in the history, history of cryptography and banking. Uh, so Siena in Italy, there'd be a lot of people that would go to Rome, would go especially to Venice, because Venice, you know, was obviously a trading centre. Um, but there were a lot of bandits on the road. So if you went out, you know, with money going from Siena to Venice or Veneto, I think, or the area of Veneto, there was a lot of burglaries. But at, at that time, this is probably the 13th century, the Knights Templar, you'd been on the Crusades and all types of, cult mysticism they were also you know the world's first bankers so you'd have a kind of network of bankers all around you know what's now italy or you know disassociated states at those at those times so what you could do is that you could uh, go to a knight's templar bank i suppose in siena and they would give you a code uh you know a cryptography uh you know set of numbers um you'd you'd remember those get on your horse without your money and by the time you got to venice or similar city you could repeat that code to the knights templar banker and he would give you money uh, and that's basically the, the history of you know one of the first examples of cryptography i think the chinese were first they used to used to have runners that used to have code shaved into their head and then they'd grow their hair so no one knew what they had and they'd have their head shaved off when, when they when they got to the other end. I think they were probably the first. But, you know, it's always good to have a backstory. I love that. What an incredibly cool story. And here in 2021, do you have any use cases that you could possibly share that would just help anyone listening understand how it all works and the role of the token too? No, well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a tough one because, as, it's, as I said, we're, we're about to launch, yeah. you know, to be tradable. But I think if you go to the, the, the Siena Network Telegram group, um, there's so much chat about this, you know. I mean, I, I we're announcing next week how much we've raised public uh, sale. Um, these numbers are about ten. We were ten times oversubscribed. Um, there's a huge amount of interest, not just from you know the people that are chatting in the, in the Telegram group, but also uh, from institutionalised finance, realising that you know we we, we want to have a part of this. We think it's the future, and it has literally over the last three months been like working at Facebook. Uh, at the very beginning, it's big ping, ping, ping. You know, it's like the social network or the social or the or the DeFi privacy network. That'll be a film in ten years' time. It was. It's just been insane. 
So when it comes to user cases, I mean, we're, we're away from that, I think. But um, but to understand how it all works, Sienna.network is the website, um, and, and that's not just shilling. That's a, it's a really good website that explains most of it. Uh, we do a lot of medium posts and stuff like that. But Telegram groups, you can probably have an unbiased, I mean, I'm obviously biased, but if you go through the groups and listen to what people are saying, what people are asking, it's a very, very exciting, uh, very, very ex- exciting place to be. And as we record the podcast today, I believe you're also listing on Uniswap this week. So is there anything else you can share on that? And and also plans to get on other exchanges too? Or have you began the application process? I appreciate you probably can't share too much on that, but I know there'll be community members listening to your every word on that. Well, no, we, we, we did launch on DowMaker. So it's a DEX, decentralized exchanges. Um, so we launched on DowMaker last week. That was That was the public sale. You know, we're, again, we were heavily oversubscribed. We're going, I think, is it tomorrow? I can't remember the time. I should know this. On Polkastar to tomorrow, that's another, you know, a public sale. And then a few hours after that, we are going on Uniswap. And that's when we'll see what our listing price of $6 per token, uh, what's going to happen to it. You know, there's all types of talk of 100x or 50x. And, you know, the, the thing about it is that we don't care about what that at the moment. We're, we're this is not a pump and dump scheme. We're in it for the long haul. All of the people that contribute to the Sienna network are, you know, long, 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 long uh, vestments. You know, we, we got none of no one can jump in or jump out. All of the people that were, you know, the pioneers in this area. Uh, so that's the. I mean, that's the story for now. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens on Uniswap. You know, we've got our own launchpad, Sienna launchpad, that we'll be following after that. So, it's you know, we do. I mean, it's almost like the weirdest, weirdest revolution to be part of. You know, uh, the application process is very KYC heavy. You know your customer because we're trying to, uh, you know, we're trying to front run bad term really um, any form of regulation. You know, so if there's any. Anything that we're doing that might be regulated in the future, we're covered now. So we ensure that we're very, very strict on uh, on who invests in us and who buys our buys our coin. And speaking of regulation, I believe you also recently completed a CERTIC audit. And for people listening that are outside the industry, can you just tell me a little bit more about that and why it's so important? Well, it's just it's just a form of again QA and endorsement of of what you're doing. CERTIC K audit is pretty well established in that area um and you know as i said we want to be uh we want to be all okay for kyc and i know it is still very early days but is there anything you can share about what your community can possibly expect from sienna over the next 12 months well i just think continual growth i yeah. think that what we're trying to do with the coin with the protocols of the lending that we hope to do the liquidity pools that have come with our investors you know that, that there's certain aspects of their investment that comes with liquidity. Uh, and I think that, I mean, without being too confident, I think that the community is, is going to grow uh, and we're going to have, we've got a timeline of announcements uh, and you know milestones for the next year that I think will keep everybody interested. And what are your biggest challenges right now? I'm curious. Is it, is it securing partnerships, increasing adoption or, or something completely different? Well, I work with geniuses, right? Yeah. So I'm just the chief evangelist, the rest of them are geniuses. So how they've managed to secure partnerships and, and grow these groups on Telegram and Twitter is beyond me. Yeah. But the biggest challenge right now, sadly, uh, and I think anyone in this space or, you know, we live in a, an infected internet age of scammers, you know, bombardment of what you're trying to do, bots trying to replicate your groups, you know, we you know we have we we have an, a white white hat hacker who has been helping us you know you know defend ourselves against hackers. But I think it's that any company will tell you now that this is the biggest challenge of all. You know, and uh, we're lucky enough, I think, to be fairly strong in our defences. And this is an ongoing challenge, and we will address it. But I, I would say that that things about partnerships, adoption, interoperability, price of the coin. That's all fine, but it's when people are trying to destroy you. That's what you have to be. Uh, that's what you have to defend against. Yeah, I completely agree, and that's a topic that we don't hear enough about. And looking forward, then, what's your grand vision for Sienna and, and the topic of 
privacy meets DeFi, where do you see the industry heading and what role do you see Sienna playing in that future? Well, we have hopefully a central role. Yeah. Um, that, that would be that would answer your grand vision question. I mean, we really think that we're a big evangelist of decentralized finance. I think, I mean, I personally wasn't given any, you know, personal finance education when I was younger. And I think a lot of people are like that. You know, it's only been in recent years that I finally worked out what it is. I mean, I'm not particularly a capitalist. I, I find that, you know, centralized anything is a pain in the ass, whether it's a government, whether it's a political, you know, philosophy, whether it's a bank. It doesn't really work. None of it, nothing's ever worked on a grand scale. You know, me, me and you, Neil, could never drink in Armenia. We could never drink in Birmingham. We could never drink in London. And we probably know 150 people, in, in, you know, that we really like that are the same as us and we're all fine. You know, yeah. it's when people try to try to create these centralised entities that, um, well, they, they never work, as I said. So the, the, the vision is to have, you know, real decentralised finance financial protocol work which people can trust uh, and have a community there that is uh was devoted to it basically and that's because that's what we are we're in this for the long term there's we're not coming in cashing in our chips and going out this isn't a casino to us this is more like a playground of good people inside it excellent well i've loved chatting with you today a question i always love asking my guests outside of tech is is there a song that has inspired you in the past, helped you on your career, or helps you get your head in the zone before going on stage and having that selfie with Kim Kardashian or just remind you of tech? What, what would your song be, that, that soundtrack to uh, to your tech career? Jesus, I mean, there's probably there's hundreds, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm a massive music fan from opera to, you know, punk or whatever. But I, I think the song that... St- you know when you have that kind of top five of all time, for top yeah. five gigs, top five bands top five songwriters or whatever that can change quite a lot and, and i've got a lot of songs that come in and out but uh, i remember listening to this song with a new thing called a walkman which i've never put on my head before and running around outside delhi airport listening to hurricane by bob dylan you know 20 well 10 years after i first heard it in mallorca and that oh scarlet riviera and that kind of violin and and even if people I don't like Bob Dylan's voice you know you can't underestimate the guy's impact as a songwriter uh, but that song even non Dylan haters like that song Hurricane by Bob Dylan from the 1975 album Desire oh man what a tune and you're the second person to to mention that one as well especially the full length eight minute version just oh, completely good, blues good. I'm glad to hear you've got Guess of similar tastes. Yeah. yeah, I'm just relieved you didn't say "Wide for Sound" by Cliff Richard. <laughs> uh, well, that wasn't one of the ones that come in and out. At the top. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who could forget the lyrics? Uh, the, the infamous lyrics: "I like small speakers. I like tall speakers." <laughs> Christ, it sounds like me and you are in our. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Before I let you go, can you remind everyone listening where they can find Sienna online? Join that Telegram group, contact your team and all the usual stuff. Where's the best starting point? Our best starting point is definitely our website, which is uh, Sienna with two N, Sienna.network, you know, no dot coms or anything like that. Sienna.network. That'll tell you everything that we're trying to do. Um, we're pretty big on Twitter. I've uh, got 30,000 followers there. Same on Telegram. It's pretty easy to find. Um yeah, I'd go for the overview. I would go to the website, and then uh, after that, I would I would check out the Telegram and Twitter, and then make up your own mind. You know, what I mean, it's like you, you go straight into a focus group, right? Uh, yeah. And if there's anything going on in there, which we try to moderate the scammers and get them out. We seem to be doing okay at the moment. Cool. Well, I feel like I could just chat to you for hours about so much, and we'll have to grab that cold beer at a tech conference or somewhere in the near future. But more than anything, just thanks for sharing the story about Sienna there today, and uh, look forward to chatting with you again soon. Hey, Neil, listen, really nice to hear from you. Thanks for the invitation. You know, I hope giving some value to your audience. You've obviously got some, you've had some great speakers on. To, to, to say that I've been on the podcast to my kid later that they had William Shatner on the podcast, I think <laughs> that might be, uh, you might have made my day. Man, I could just chat with Monty forever, and I do hope I'll grab that beer with him and hear more about some of those stories, both in and outside of tech. But, of course, it was especially cool to hear more about the Sienna Network, what they're building, and how quickly they hit the ground running. It's fantastic what they've achieved. So I'm going to be following that project very closely. But please let me know your thoughts about anything you heard today, the future of this industry, 
and the work that Sienna is doing by simply emailing me, techblogwriteroutlook.com. Uh, my website is techblogwriter.co.uk. You'll find links to all my social channels, how to contact me, and all that usual stuff. But it's time for me to get out of here now. So a big thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.